Frans van Merlen, you restored this organ with much skill and expertise in 1987 to 88. We are very glad that you have agreed to guide us through this documentary and I would like to begin by talking about this curious rugwerk. A rugwerk, which is in fact a fake. It is indeed not a rugwerk at all. If you were to look inside, you would think it had been abandoned, that there used to be pipes in there. But Smiths intended it as a separate gesture, purely to indicate to the viewer that it is indeed an organ with three manuals. Franz Smiths seems to have taken into account the manner of music making typical in the Roman Catholic churches. In that sense he was old-fashioned. His starting point was the tradition of Gregorian chant and the two voice masses composed in Amsterdam, as well as the three voice masses in the Mozart style from Austria. What I find so striking is that Franz Smiths designed such a sweeping façade, principally by placing the central tower so high. Don't you find it a beautiful façade? Yes, it is magnificent. It could almost be an organ from 100 years earlier, but in the details, for example these decorations, you can see that Smiths adapted the style of his time. The front wall of this positif, on the Werk, contains small openings. That is to create a modest swell effect by weakening the sound slightly. Now, time I think to go inside the organ, but let's look first at the console. Franz, this is the original console of Smiths. He made his action also himself and did it in an unusual manner. Yes, you can see from the dimensions of the manuals that they are almost piano keyboards. The white keys are long, as are the black keys. And the space between the keys is fairly broad, real ivory in two parts. The fronts of the keys are made of beech, which in fact he didn't use very often. Mostly he used bone or ivory. On a three manual instrument, Smiths allowed the second keyboard, the Hoofdwerk, to partially protrude from the console, so that everything remained easily playable. The pedal board is also a real Smiths pedal board, still original. During the restoration, some keys were restored to their original height, because they had become so badly worn. Typical of a Smiths pedal board is this small curve on the back edge of the key, and the same curve on the front edge. The stop knobs on this organ are made of ebony, with a small inlay of bone engraved by hand. Each inlay then is slightly different, which makes it very interesting. Smiths still use the capital letter V for feet. And here is the small pedal to open the swell box, which we just discussed. We are now inside the Onderwerk, and you can see here a part of the stop mechanism, which is opened by the slider. The cornet, which has no tears. The euphone, flagellet, octave two foot. The stop action still has the original paint, which is lead based. Why did he make the stop action from iron? Mostly it is made of wood. Yes, that's right. Smiths was a very solid organ builder. He wished to ensure that it could never break. Smiths was very precise with his rollerboards, and he made them in a unique and personal manner. These are for the Bovenwerk and these for the Hofwerk. And here we can see the square arms for the Hoofdwerk. Yes, those of the Bovenwerk and Hoofwerk run through and above each other. That is because the console of the organ is on the side, with the result that Smiths had to provide an extra roller. The organ has a fairly long horizontal action. Therefore Smiths provided a square with trackers going downwards. The chimneys give the Ruhrflaut slightly more overtones. In general, Smiths didn't make many Ruhrflauts. The Gemshorn was added in 1955 on an empty slide, which had never been filled. Now it's almost impossible to tell the difference in colour between the old and newer pipe material. 
Dan komt de roerfluit. Dan de roerfluit. Dan de cornet. Dan de cornet, which was installed in 1987-88. Smits almost never placed a tier trunk in his cornets, and this is no exception. This example has a forefoot and a two and two thirds. Then the octave two foot and the flagellet, which contains the smallest pipes in the organ. Then the remarkable earphone, which used to be a free reed. The earphone, I will open one up, used to be a real free reed. In 1955 it was converted to a beating reed because the tongues had been broken off. It doesn't have its specific free reed character anymore. You can see here the tongue beats normally. Now it is actually a sort of vox humana. It sounds nice with the tremulant, but it doesn't have its original free reed sound. I will play on the earphone with the tremulant. Ik zal hem even laten horen met de tremulant A. Frans. These flue pipes must be the highest notes of the euphon. Why did he use flue pipes for those highest notes? Smits always did this, and he wasn't alone. There were various organ builders who did it, because the highest notes are impossible to make with a free reed. Such a reed becomes too weak and thin, and at a certain point it breaks off completely. In any case, you can't hear the difference anymore. The highest notes of the earphone are completely in the boot. Yes, it was purposely made like that. We are now in the Hofwerk, and we are going to ask Franz if he can take this trompet pipe to pieces for us. Smits never built a trompet with a double block, or was a long boot with one block. We see here a block with a beautiful shape, and here the wedge, shallot and tongue, and a long iron tuning wire. The original moulds are in Martin Seibel's organ museum in Elburg. Look, such a long boot strengthens the weak point of the resonator here, underneath. What a collection! On this one wind chest you can see both the Hofwerk and the Bovenwerk. A very deep chest, therefore, with the Hofwerk on one side and the Bovenwerk on the other, next to each other. We can see it here in the division of the soundboards. Smiths made here incisions on the wind chest. This stripe indicates the center line of both the pallets and the pipes of the Hofwerk, and this one beside it is that of the Bovenwerk. So, there are two grooves next to each other. Here, in front, are the pallets of the Hofwerk, and there, behind, are the pallets of the Bovenwerk. That black soot, next to the purses, is caused by air pollution, which attacks the leather on the purses. We can see here the feathers under the pallets, which are important in determining the key pressure. These rollers are necessary because the console is on the side of the organ. We are looking now at the rear of the front pipes. The gaps in the pipes are intended to allow the pipes to speak better. In fact, the pipes are only this long, the rest is just over length. We call the gaps eggs. This is the tuning scroll. With these small flaps, you can make the pitch slightly higher or lower. If you push the tuning scroll inward, the pitch gets higher. If you pull it out, the pitch becomes lower. These are wooden pipes of the Burden 16 foot of the Hofwerk. Here is the viola de gamba. The flute traverse has an unusual shape with a round lip. After the flute traverse comes the whole pipe of the Hofwerk, then the prestant 4 of the Hofwerk. Then the conical pipes of the flout forefoot, treble only. The octave two foot, the mixture, trompet, cromhorn, and the clairon. In the treble here, you can see the prestant forefoot of the bovenwerk. This is the pipe F3. It is not a flute, but the character of the sound is somewhere between a flute and a principle. Franz, that was an informative explanation. Many thanks.